Welcome to a cyberpunk city with a bunch of signs that say a bunch of different advertisements. Hey guys, welcome back to Spy Kai. I'm Kai, and today we are back. You guessed it. You probably guessed it, most likely. In Blender 2.8 once again. And we're making some neon signs today. A lot of you guys have been asking me about uh, neon signs and cool, uh, 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 you know, more realistic things. And I figure we'll kick it off with some neon signs because I've been getting this from since the dawn of time. Uh, so we're doing it today. We're going to go ahead and get rid of default cube by hitting delete on my keyboard. I'm sorry. Hit uh, shift A on my keyboard here to add in a, uh, a curve. This will be pretty cool because uh, we don't ever use curves, which is going to be nice. So I'm going to start it off with, uh, you could use a, you could really use a path. It's pretty, it's pretty much the same thing. Um, so we're going to start off with a curve. We'll do that. So we'll choose a curve. And I'm going to hit 1 on my numpad to go into the front-facing view. Now what we're going to do with this is we're going to spell out the word that we want to spell, essentially. So I'm going to do neon just for the purpose of the thumbnail for this tutorial. <laughs> Um, but you do any word that you want to do. And what I'm going to do, as you can see, I'm taking these little points, these little points right here, and hitting G to move them on my keyboard, G. Um, and we will go ahead and just grab that one, just pull it down. And now the red line is not the line you're supposed to be looking at. So don't look at that. Ignore that line. I want you to be looking at, I want you to be looking at the, um, the black line. The black line is the actual curve. That's what we want to focus on. So you're just manipulating the red line here to get the black line to do what you want. Now, you're gonna, we're going to need a couple more points in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down Shift, select uh, two of these things, and hit F. I'm oh, sorry, hit uh, F. And we can also, we can do it that way. We can break it. We can uh, right click and hit subdivide and then break the line like that. And we have another point to manipulate. Or we can select one of the end pieces and hit E to extrude that, that point. And I'm going to get a little tail going up like that for the for the top of in for neon I'm gonna grab this guy and since neon signs are always fluid and they don't usually ever I mean they do stop sometimes like they do have ends to them but I'm gonna make this one fluid sign so that should be pretty fun so we'll go ahead and, and pull that up there you can see the black line kind of swerves around like that I'm gonna go ahead and hit in to make another another piece here hit G to move and we'll just kind of uh, just extrude some pieces out. You can extrude as many times as you want to. You can really just do like this instead of having to worry about just using all the curves and getting it to w the way you want. You could just do like this. There's no law against it. Um, but uh, but yeah. So this the, the less lines you use, the smoother it actually will be. But uh, you can definitely go ahead and get in, get in some more lines in there. So I'll do one right here too. Hold down Shift, right click, subdivide, grab that piece, pull it back. And um, if you need to see what the black line looks like without the red just for a second, you can hit tab to go out of that. So tab to go into it, by the way. I don't think I said that, actually. Um, so there we go. We could just do that real quick. And I'm going to actually move this bottom piece up here. And there we go. Something like that. Just hit G to move them in and out. Alrighty, I think that's going to be it for the neon sign there. I've done all the letters, I've extruded all of the points. Now, if you take a look from the side, actually I did a pretty good job except for the end here. Um, if you happen to go off center, like let's say you had a couple of points over here, over here, you know, wherever and stuff like that. And when you look at the side, they're not like completely straight. So if I hit three on my numpad, you can see this should all be like a completely straight line. If it's not... What I'm going to say to do is going to go ahead and go to the front person view here. So hit 1 on your numpad to go to the front person view. Hit tab to go back into edit mode. Hit A to select all of the points. And hit S, Y, 0 to scale it on the Y axis uh, and push them all together, which is what the 0 does. They all pop straight into the line, which is nice. So, all right. Continuing on, this might be a problem down here, but we can fix that later on. It might be a little bit too close together, but that's okay. Um, now, we can go ahead and uh, go to this curve section right here, this little curve uh, context data, object data tab, there we go, um, and we can scroll on down to geometry and make sure the extrude value is turned up a little bit. Now, you can see we have a little bit of a mesh going on now, which is pretty nice. So if we were going for something thin, then we'd be done. We'd be done right now, but we're not. So I'm actually going to go ahead and turn up the r resolution as well. So I'm going to turn that up to 64, um, which seems kind of high, but it's not. <laughs> We're going to go and scroll on down to uh, b -b 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 bevel, and we can turn the depth up. Now you can see now we have that 3D object that we're looking for, you know. And we can also turn the resolution up, um, but I don't recommend going up too high with this because you can see um, you can see that if you you can imagine that if you do, it's going to start causing lag. So I'm going to guess we just go up to probably 16 is even too much. So let me just do let me just do eight. Eight's probably fine the way it is. Don't even worry about it. Um, all right. 
So, my friends, now we have a couple more things to do here. I actually want to go ahead and turn the extrude value down. So you see, if we turn the extrude value up, it kind of gets like, like thicker in one direction. So like it's thicker this way than it is this way, which is not what I want. So if you want that, then leave that extrude up. But if you don't want that, you can turn the extrude all the way down, and now you have that completely tube-like neon classic sign, which is what I'm going for in today's tutorial. So we're going to leave that the way that it is because I like it. Now, if you need to do anything to edit the text, don't worry about it because you can because it's not actually text. You just made it. <laughs> um, we can go ahead and hit tab and go right back into edit mode and change this on the fly. Hit uh, G to move these around. Make sure they're not like super touching or something like that. They can touch, but I just don't want them to clip a lot. Now I did all that first because I want to make sure I have it exactly the way I want it before we go ahead and hit shift D to duplicate this. And now what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and zoom into this little area right here so you can see what I'm doing here. So if I turn down the depth, you can see that inside is this nice little tube, which is what we need. So this tube is actually going to be what's lighting our, our, our neon sign. We're not actually going to light, uh, um, light it up with the actual tube we're using. We're going to do it on the inside the way a neon sign actually is. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this to 0 0.015, and that should be pretty good the way that it is. So, my friends, we're looking good. All right, there we go. Um, so now, uh, what was I doing? I forgot. Uh, oh, yes, that's correct. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and scroll on in here so I can so I can show you as easy as possible. I'm going to grab our, our inside tube, the one we just made. I'm going to go to the Material tab and hit New on this material. We're going to change this surface from Principal BSDF to Emission, and we're going to change the strength to 5 for now. We might change that later on, but that's fine. If we go to Render Viewport Shading up here at the top, you see we see no difference. We only The only thing we see is like inside here, uh, that's all we can see. We can't see anything else. Um, but that's okay because if we select our actual text now, the the big the big one, the big Kahuna over here. Um, or oh, you know what I want to do? We let me let's do this again. Let's do this again actually because I want to do this cool little thing that I did. I forgot about this. All right, so let me go back to the solid viewport shading. Now you see these little pieces that are kind of intersecting. I don't like that. I'm gonna go ahead and select this this piece and I'm gonna pull this out away from it. And I'm gonna purposely make that not in line by hitting G. And moving it over. I'm going to do that with anything else that intersects, which I have nothing else that actually does that. I just really don't like the way that looks, so I'm going to go ahead and fix that. Now we can go ahead and do the same thing. I forgot about that. Sorry about that, guys. All right, so hit Shift D, right click to cancel the movement, go back to that, uh, go back to the uh, object data tab, depth uh, 1, 5. There we go. We're all good to go now. Because if I did it before, then it wouldn't be in line with it, so I have to make sure it's all set the way I, have, well, I want it before we do anything like that. So there we go. Um, now, we can go back and put that same material on the inside one. On the outside one, we'll go ahead, select the, the other material, so the default material that we had. And we'll scroll all the way on down here. And I did a glass tutorial very recently, um, but we're going to do the same thing we did then. So I'm going to turn transmission all the way up. I'm going to turn specular uh, a little bit more up. I'm going to turn the roughness down. I'm going to go ahead and turn screen space refraction on. I'm going to go up to render viewport shading up here first. And then I'm going to go to the scene tab, turn on screen space reflections, and I'm going to make sure refraction is checked. Now you can see, we can see through this, but the um, emission shader is too bright, like I said. So we're probably going to turn that down. We will have to turn it down a lot. So let's put it back to one for now. Um, and then we'll go ahead and grab our main tube here, and we'll change the depth. We'll change the depth down to... Eh, Maybe 0 0.2? 0 0.2 looks good, right? Maybe 0 0.15, actually. 0 0.15. Nope, the other way. 0 0.25. And now, we'll just leave it on 0.2. It's fine. Leave it on 0.2. There we go. All right, there we go. So now, instead of changing the emission color of the white tube, we're going to change the bigger one. So we're going to change the color of this one to a color that we want. So we'll just do, like, green or something. If I turn my overlays off um, and then grab that white color in there again. We can turn the we can turn that uh, emission uh, value back up maybe to even something like super bright like 50. 50 looks amazing. Uh, maybe we can we get away with a, like a, ooh a thousand looks pretty good too. Wow, actually, uh, I wasn't expecting a thousand to be that great to be honest with you. I thought it was going to be too much. What is five thousand like? You know, five thousand really even works to be honest with you. I mean, it is a neon sign after all. Hope you boys and girls enjoyed it. It's going to take a little bit of time to render, actually, because we got a little bit of glass going on. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so I will see you boys and girls in the next one. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something new. Um, but until then, bye-bye.